In March 2012, Daniel Pelka, a four-year-old boy, was subject to horrific brutality at the hands of his mother and stepfather. Their relentless violence ended with sweet defenseless Daniel dead. His story is heartbreaking, infuriating and very sad. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel where we talk about real crimes and real people. This is the cruel and brutal murder of Daniel Palka. Wanna know what happened? Let's get started. Daniel Palka was born on July 15, 2007 in Coventry, England. His parents were Eric Palka and Magdalena Lubczak. Both of them were Polish. At the end of 2005, Eric, his family and partner Magdalena moved to the UK looking for better opportunities. They moved constantly because Magdalena pushed for a bigger house. In 2008, Eric ended the relationship with Magdalena after, allegedly, he caught her with another man. He moved away, leaving little Daniel at the hands of Magdalena. Even though Daniel was born and lived in UK, Daniel only spoke, mainly Polish. By the end of the year 2009, Magdalena met Marius. Marius was no stranger to the system. He had a criminal record which included drunk driving and theft. When he was caught driving under the influence, he was fined and given a 16-month ban. For the theft charges, he had to pay a fine. In 2006, Marius was caught driving without a license. He was given a suspended 16-week jail sentence. The same year, he was caught again, but this time he had to spend 18 weeks in prison. In 2007, he was caught driving without a license. He was sentenced to 16 weeks in prison. This didn't stop him from driving without a license, regardless of what sentence given to him for Marius rules it and apply. In 2008, he received a 20-week sentence for the same infraction. After meeting Magdalena, the two moved into a flat in Bedworth and little Daniel went along. Magdalena had a new partner and the two of them together fed the evil they had inside. And for reasons unknown, little Daniel would be their target, their easy and defenseless victim, the subject of humiliation, cruelty, starvation and brutality. From early on, Magdalena and Mario's relationship was violent. Several reports showed authorities had been called regarding domestic violence incidents. Magdalena stated Mario's had actually tried to strangle her. She also claimed Mario's had watched indecent photos of young girls in the internet and that he had assaulted her several times. However, no arrests were made regarding this issue. Magdalena was visited by health visitors and social workers and claimed she was able to protect the children from Marius. But she never left him, even though she had a supportive network of family and friends, she could have asked for help. Health visitors and midwives had provided her with a list of organizations that could help her. Instead, she embarked, along with Marius, in a campaign of cruelty against her innocent son, with plenty of witnesses but no one did nothing to help and save Daniel. In January 2011, Marius broke Daniel's arm. Instead of taking him to the hospital, they waited 12 long, excruciating hours with Daniel in agonizing pain. Magdalena did everything to keep it a secret and lied about it. He was taken to the hospital the next day. Besides a broken arm, Daniel had several bruises in his arm, left shoulder, and stomach. A nurse suspected Daniel was a victim of child abuse. Magdalene and Marius lied. They told the doctors had fallen off a sofa. They also instructed Daniel's siblings to lie, and the doctor stated the broken arm could actually have been an accident. 2011 started bad for Daniel, and it would only get worse. In March 2011, they moved into a three-bed property in Coventry. In July 2011, another complaint against Marius. Magdalena accused him of trying to strangle her. In August 2011, issues were raised by health visitors who stated Daniel was obsessed with food. 
In September 2011, Daniel started at Little Heath Primary School in Coventry. The systematic cruelty against Daniel got worse from then on. In October 2011, a health visitor showed up at Daniel's home. Because he was eating too much food, he would overeat free fruit the school provided. Marius told Daniel raided the fridge at night. Daniel would also punch him if he wasn't given food. Magdalena said Daniel was obsessed with food and that he shouldn't eat at school because he would binge and then vomit at home. Same month, there was another visitor at home because Daniel was skipping school. The house was clean and Magdalena told Daniel didn't want to go to school and Marius treated her like a princess. There was another visit regarding Daniel's obsession with food and Magdalena was advised to give Daniel a little snack before school. In November 2011, Daniel started stealing food from other students. The teacher, instead of trying to understand Daniel's behavior, locked away other students' food. Magdalena once again stated Daniel raided the fridge and that she would see the doctor, but she skipped appointments. Health visitors tried to reach out several times, but unsuccessfully. At the same time, Daniel was seen with several injuries on his neck and head by several people. However, no one called the police or social services. December 2011, Daniel was skipping school a lot. Magdalena told educational welfare officer she was unwell to take Daniel to school. She then texted Marius stating, the hags from the council were here. January 2012, after school holidays, Daniel showed signs of losing weight and showed several injuries. A school teacher and staff saw bruising around Daniel's neck and other bruises. Daniel was eating out of garbage cans and in one occasion he ate half of the teacher's birthday cake. February 2012, Daniel was seen with two black eyes. He was prescribed medicine for worms because he was too thin. Later that month, Daniel had pasty and sunken eyes. He didn't interact with other children and still ate out of trash cans. He was was emaciated and lethargic. March 1st, 2012, Daniel went to school and then was picked up by Magdalena. When he got home, Marius gave him a blow to the head. Daniel fell unconscious. Still, Marius beat him severely. He was given salt and then a cold water punishment. Daniel was left unconscious. According to Magdalena, Marius prevented her from calling an ambulance because it would cause problems. March 2nd, they searched on Google how to treat a patient in a coma and also salt poisoning. March 3rd, finally, Magdalena called 999 because Daniel wasn't breathing. At the moment Magdalena and Marius realized Daniel wasn't breathing, they planned what lies to say. Daniel was taken to the hospital where he died. After the hospital, Magdalena and Marius went to Daniel's school and told them Daniel had suffered a heart failure. An autopsy was performed. The pathologist stated she was horrified with what she saw. Daniel had 22 injuries, 11 to the head. Daniel was also starving. His bones had ceased to grow. He was emaciated. His body was compared to a victim of a concentration camp. Cause of death was brain injury. Daniel had died from bleeding and swelling of the brain. Daniel had been beaten, starved, and tortured for more than six months. Magdalena and Marius were arrested after the results of the autopsy. Marius told the police Daniel had special needs. He had learning difficulties, a genetic disorder he had inherited from his father. Eric, Daniel's father, denied these claims. Magdalena and Marius were charged with murder. They denied causing Daniel's death, but admitted to child cruelty, like it was better. Colleague of Marius stated, Marius described Daniel as all fucked up and autistic. He was not worth a beating because he wouldn't feel pain. During trial, Magdalena and Marius blamed each other. Magdalena told Marius would strangle her if she protected Daniel. He didn't let her feed Daniel. However, text messages between the two of them showed the ongoing torture they subjected little Daniel to. Magdalena was all for it. 
One of the siblings stated Magdalena tried to drown Daniel in a bath of cold water. This was proven to be true after detectives found text messages sent from Magdalena to Marius telling she had almost drowned him and that he was temporarily unconscious. Daniel was locked in a room and forbidden to use a toilet. He would urinate in a mattress they had in the room and also slept in it. They removed the handle of the door so his siblings wouldn't let him out. He was a night food, forced fed salt, make squats as punishment repeatedly and slowly. He had to kneel on the floor for long periods of time. He had to run around the living room. He was subject to cold water torture. His other siblings had no signs of abuse, but Daniel was subject to cruelty. When Daniel laid unconscious in his final hours, his body was laid next to his terrified siblings. Even though Magdalena tried to put the entire blame on Marius, she was described as controlling and a convincing manipulator who participated willingly. On August 2, 2013, Magdalena and Marius were found guilty of murder. They were sentenced to life in prison with a minimum sentence of 30 years. On July 4, 2015, Magdalena was found dead. She had hanged herself. On January 27, 2016, Marius was also found dead. He had died of a heart attack. The case caused tremendous outrage to the public because of the several opportunities that were missed. A case review stated, teachers, health professionals, social workers, and police officers treated Daniel as invisible. After several domestic violence reports, no one made sure Daniel was being treated well. No one talked to him. The doctor who misdiagnosed Daniel and prescribed him with medicine for worms was also criticized. Daniel could have been saved.